Hey guys, it's Laura and I'm back and we're doing the rope patterns on this particular segment. Oh, I love this. This is fun. So what you could do, you're going to take off some of that clay and you're going to go ahead and let's make a ball. And let's go ahead and make another one. <laughs> make two. Yay. <laughs> and then roll that out into a nice little log. Now you can make this log a lot longer. I'm making it kind of short here, but this is just for an example. And then take that, stretch it out. There we go. Put that together and twist. Woohoo! Do the twist. <laughs> and when you pull that away, there you go. And that is your first rope pattern. I love it. Quick and easy. Now for my rope pattern number two. Ooh, this is going to get fun. So again, you're going to make another ball and yet another ball. There we go. And just again, making that short little rope, making another short little rope and then putting that together and twisting yet again. You're going to get good at making all these twists. <laughs> <laughs> and then pulling the end piece off. There we go. Now, let's go ahead and add something more to this. Get my twist off there. There we go. Yeah. And let's go ahead and make a couple of little balls. I know, we're back to the ball thing. And we're just going to put it in the little juncture and the little twist area of this piece. Now I'm using Sculpey Original White here, but it's something I haven't talked about, but you guys could go ahead and use really any kind of clay you want. It doesn't have to be Sculpey. It could be Primo or Fimo or whatever. The idea is just to create pattern and enjoy it. There's pattern two. And now for rope pattern number three. Let's go ahead and again, we're going to be making that ball again. And we're just going to roll that out. And I like to use the heel of my hand when I roll this out and quick little back and forth motions to create that log. I don't like using the finger part of my hand to make a log. And part of that is because it gets very uneven. This way then when I'm dealing with the base or I should say the heel of my hand, that rope when I go to make it, it's not going to have a bunch of bumpy areas. Again, you're going to pull it, pull that end off. There you go. And we'll go ahead and make some tiny little balls yet again, putting it right in the twist area of my rope. And this rope stuff can be really useful in creating any kind of tangle you create because it really can be a guideline amongst any of your other patterns that you decide to add in. And once you get all those little balls in there, yay, we're going to add in another little tool here. Yay, my knitting needle. Woohoo! All right. And then start making just little indents or dots into those balls. And this should give you your pattern number three. All right, for pattern number four, here we go. Again, we're going to go ahead and make that ball using the heel of my hand to go ahead and roll out that log. Okay, and then take another ball and make another length of a piece of log. Make sure you get out the length that you want. And then twisting together. There, yay. And sometimes your twist, yeah, it's, it can be a little tricky, <laughs> like it is for me here. But there you go. Finally got my twist. And we're going to make the ball again, but this time 
it's going to be slightly different. We're going to put it on the side of the twist, right in the crux or the, the indentation there. And do that all along there. Okay, and you just want to keep those balls going along that side there and just gently push them in so they can kind of adhere to the rope area. And once you have these little balls all along the side, this should definitely give you your rope pattern number four. And now for our final rope pattern, rope pattern number five. Let's go ahead and make a couple more balls and roll them out again using the heel of my hand. Get that rolled out. Put them together. Oops, a little bit longer. There we go. Put that together and then twist. And pull the ends of your twist. There we go. That's a nice one. Yay. And let's go ahead and we're again going to make another ball, or I should say some tiny little balls. There we go. And we're going to put it along the side. And if you want to, I kind of tap down the ends of that rope so it doesn't move when I'm placing these balls where I want them. It stays in one place a lot easier that way. Another ball. And another. And I am so picky on size here. <laughs> but I like to keep, try and keep it consistent if I can. So if you have to, maybe you need to measure out you know, your ball as you make them and make sure that they're all about the same size before you apply them to your rope area. Now from here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to add some more of those little balls, but they're going to go down on the other side. I don't know why, but when I created this particular pattern, it almost looked like either a centipede or something. It had little feet or something. <laughs> Just something cute. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and add in that last little ball, but this will eventually give me my fifth and final pattern for my ropes here. These five patterns are going to be right here for you to reference and study whenever you wish. Have a great day.